a lot of times you're going to end up with an image that's the wrong resolution. And there are many different ways to go about resizing an image, but ultimately you have to remember that when you're up resing, you are creating new pixels that didn't originally exist. This means that your computer is going to interpolate the information and do its best to come up with new pixels. Oftentimes this works pretty well, but you need to remember there's not a never ending fountain of new pixels. You can't keep blowing up an image forever. Let me show you what Photoshop can do though, and it does work quite well. Inside of Photoshop, we can choose image, image size. In this case, I'm going to resample this to 300 pixels per inch for printing. And I see that it's a pretty small print. In this case, it's going to be about six inches by three and a half inches. I'm going to check the resample option here, and I want to make a larger print. So in this case, I need this to be a bit wider. So I'm going to type in 17 inches wide and I see that it starts to up res. From the resample dialog here, you have choices. Now automatic does a pretty good job. And what it's going to try to do is a nice balance on the up res. In the preview window here, you can really see how it's working and you can pan around and look at areas of sharp detail to see how the up res would be performed. From the drop down dialog here, you also have a couple of methods specifically designed for enlargement. Preserve details is going to focus on edge details. In this case, like the text and the strong edges in this particular image, looking at things like the seams and the hard lines. Preserve details 2.0 is a different algorithm that is similar in intention, you might prefer one over the other. It also has the ability to do a little bit of noise reduction to cut down on the noise getting also enlarged. So you see a cleaner enlargement. The last one by Cubic Smoother is good when you're doing a very large resample. In this case, I'm going to choose Preserve Details 2.0. It's a little bit slower, but it does the best job in my opinion. When I click OK, the image is resized and you'll notice that we have the actual details here. In this case, it did a pretty solid job and the traditional Photoshop technology was used for the resizing. Let's go ahead and choose save a copy and I'll place this in the same folder. And now I'm going to revert this image and center it. Command or Control Zero. There is an additional way that you can do this, and it's under the filter menu called Neural Filters. In this case, there's an option called Super Zoom. If you've not used it before, you'll need to click the download button and allow it to update the filter. Now what you'll see here is the ability to use AI for this. I'm gonna tell it to slightly reduce the noise, as well as some additional sharpening, and do a two times blow up. Once you do that, you'll see that it recalculates the image. Let's go to a three times enlargement. Your device will need to process, but it's using AI to attempt to do a cleaner enlargement. When you click OK, the new image is generated. Now, if we look at this, it is using artificial intelligence on the resize. So some of the softer details in the background may have some additional artifacts. Let's open up that other one here that we created and have a look. I'll zoom in here and take a look at some of the finer details. This is the one created with traditional Photoshop technology. And here's the one created with AI technology. Now it's a bit subjective which one is better and that's why you always have choices in Photoshop. I actually think I prefer the traditional one here just slightly due to some of the higher contrast areas here and artifacts that are occurring in the background. AI struggled a bit with some of these really blown out areas, but that is again subjective. In either case, it's great to have options. If we take a look at both of these here, we've substantially enlarged the image. The 300% AI enlargement was able to take this to about a 19 inch print. And using the more traditional method, I was also able to specify a target size and I got to that 17 inch output. 
you're gonna see more and more options for this because as printing quality improves and screen resolution improves, there's going to be a demand to have higher quality images. And oftentimes, particularly as we go back to early digital images, there was compromises made about capture or about how those files were stored. So sometimes you're gonna find that you have a need to increase the resolution on an existing digital file. Knowing about both the AI option under neural filters and the traditional image size menu will give you some flexibility when it comes to making those resizes.